What's going on all my new current and future ride show drivers and passengers out there? Welcome to the channel. Before I get started, if this is your first time here and you find the content helpful, entertaining otherwise, please make sure you hit that subscribe button and remember to click that little bell icon. That way you get notified when I come out with new videos. Today's video, I have 15 tips for new drivers, all drivers, pretty much people should know these things, okay? A lot of them should be common sense, but we all know how the, in this world today is common sense isn't so common anymore. So let's go ahead and get started. And obviously, rule number one is I'm always right. No, I'm just kidding. But here we go. Here's 15 tips I believe everybody should know, especially before you start driving. Now, number one, let's keep it real. Don't quit your day job, okay? Don't quit your job just to do rideshare for Uber and Lyft full time. All right, I strongly recommend against that. Uh, maybe five, six years ago, that was more feasible when the rates were higher and people were making a lot more money. But nowadays, eh, unless you're out there hustling, you are not going to get rich. So don't quit your day job. Number two is sign up using someone's link or code. I know a lot of people didn't know about this when they first joined. And if you didn't, you still might be in luck. So follow the instructions I have in the description below and potentially have a bonus or guarantee retroactively applied today. Now, how the bonus and guarantee works is it's still a bonus in three different markets. They will get an either extra $50, $100, or $150. For all the other markets, it's a guarantee. And how the guarantee works is, let's say you have X amount of trips. After you complete those trips, you are guaranteed to make $500. If you make less than the $500, let's say you make $400 in whatever trips your market is, because every market's different, then you will get the difference. So if you only made 400, then you'll get a bonus of $100. If you make more than the $500 while completing your market's trips, you will not get anything extra. Okay, I wanna make sure that's clarified for everybody else out there that doesn't know this. So it's still worth the shot because you might have a chance of getting something. Now, number three is very important. Have your essentials, okay? You must, you must have a phone mount, a charger, puke bags and buckets, and it's highly recommended you should have a dash camera, okay? A phone mount, obviously, safety reasons. You don't want to be sitting there driving around holding your phone, looking at it. No, your passengers are going to get all freaked out. It's just not safe. You don't want to get any reports on you for unsafe driving. A charger, while you have the apps on, it drains your battery pretty fast. So you want to make sure you have a charger for yourself. If you want to have chargers for other people, go right ahead. You do not have to provide snacks, drinks, and all that other stuff, happy endings. You don't have to do any of that, okay? If you would like to do extra, that's on you. Just know it's not guaranteed that doing extra is going to make you more money or not. But it's your business. You do with it as you like. Dash camera, to me personally, you should not be out there driving without a dash camera, okay? Dash, cr dash camera does not discriminate. It tells exactly what goes on on the ride. And let's face it, when people know they're being recorded, they they, they, they act right, okay? They, they're pretty much on their better behavior than if, they're, if they know they're not being recorded. And with a dash cam, please make sure you find out if you are in a one-party consent state or a two-party consent state. If you're in a one-party consent state, you do not have to have signs everywhere letting people know they're being recorded because you're in one party. Only one person needs to know, you. If you're in a two-party consent state, you need to have stickers up. You have to make sure people know that when they get into your car, they are being recorded for your safety. That is what it's for. It's strictly for your safety and, you know, and the passenger safety, but you want to have it for you. Obviously, passengers aren't bringing in their own dash cams. So, but you want to make sure you have signs displayed. Personally, for me though, one party or not, I would still say get the signs because I want people to know they're being recorded so they act right. Number four. You want to make sure you track your miles and expenses, guys, okay? Me, personally, I use QuickBooks. QuickBooks is awesome. I pay like $10 a month for it, which is also a tax write-off at the end of the year. But it tracks everything for me as soon as I get in the car. As soon as I start driving, it tracks the miles each and every time. Yes, Uber and Lyft will track your miles, but if you want to depend on their numbers, eh, I would not recommend it because their apps glitch all the time. And if something was to happen to your phone or anything like that, well... QuickBooks has the cloud pretty much thing and everything's there. So that way you will always have your information if something happens to your phone or you delete the app on accident, something like that. As long as you're paying for it, it's still going to be there. And you want to make sure you track your expenses for the simple fact of make sure this is worth it for you. Make sure you're actually making money and not losing money. Okay, because if you're driving around and you're losing money, 
why continue to do it, right? That that's not that's not smart at all. Um, number five, please use a practical vehicle. I don't know how many times I see people out out there with their big SUVs and everything, not getting those luxury rides and pretty much settling for XL or economy and not not making money. They're losing money. That pretty much goes back to <laughs> track your expenses. So please use a practical vehicle. Use something like a Toyota Camry or a Prius, something like that if you only want to do X. If you're going to do XL, you can use a van. Vans are very great on gas mileage. So you want to make sure you have a gas efficient and a low maintenance vehicle. That's the best advice I can get you, I can give you when it comes to that. Now, number six is something a lot of people don't have. Um, either they don't look into it or don't know about it, but it's ride share insurance, okay? Yes, Uber and Lyft have insurance, but you want to make sure you are covered completely. From my understanding, phase one, when you have the app on and you are looking for a ride, if you are out there driving around and you get in an accident, you are not going to be covered unless you opted in, I'm um, pretty sure, into Uber's extra insurance. But a lot of people don't do that because who wants to pay two cents a mile on every trip, right? Right? That's what you're thinking. So please get a ride share endorsement. Um, many of the insurance companies now are offering them. I have mine through USAA. It's only like an extra $10 a month on top of, you know, my premium or whatever. So please guys get ride share insurance, check it out. You know what I'm saying? If you have to call around, get the best quote, see if your insurance you have right now offers it. Okay. But it's best to have it now than to find out you should have had it later on when you actually need it. That's, that's what you need to do. Okay. Now, number seven, make a plan, guys. Now, after all that stuff, when you've made sure you got the right vehicle, you got your apps, you got all your equipment, you know what I'm saying? You want to make sure you make a plan. Don't just drive around aimlessly wasting fuel hoping to get rides. Now, sometimes when you start out in a new market, you obviously have to do that to test everything out, but you want to know where to go and when to go, okay? In most markets, it's practical to say pretty much if you're going to start out, 4 a.m. in the morning to about 10 a.m. in the morning is like the prime times in almost every market out there. And then again in the afternoon for 4 uh, p.m. to 10 p.m. is pretty much good times. Uh, for the weekends and everything else, you're just going to have to figure that out on your own markets. But weekends is definitely usually always good all around. Okay, you got the walk of shame people from Friday and Saturday nights. So <laughs> early in the morning on both of those work just the same as during the week. And obviously for those that don't know, Mondays and Fridays are very, very, very good for airport trips for the simple fact of people coming in and out of town. Most business people, you leave on Monday, you come back on Friday, or leave on Friday, come back on Monday. Either way, those are two hot days to go to the airport. Now, number eight is something people don't know, or most of us know now, but we sure as hell didn't know when we first started driving because there was no lesson plan or anything out there, no tips, tricks, no, nothing out there to tell us these things. Okay, please. Number eight, do not take unaccompanied minors. All right, you are not babysitters. Do not take them. If their parents are not coming with them, you don't take them, okay? Poor planning on their part is not an emergency on your part. Don't fall for that. I'll tip you in the app either because guess what? It ain't gonna happen. And if you get into an accident or something, it's against Ubers and Lyfts uh, terms of service to take on a company minors. So good luck on being covered. You don't want the headache. Trust me, just don't do it. Number nine, do not take kids without booster seats and car seats. All right, don't, do not let people get in your car and put their kid on their lap and be like, it's okay, don't worry, I do this all the time. You know what? That's cool. You can do it all the time you want. You want to be a, a piss poor parent? Hey, more power to you. But guess what? Do not let it go down in your vehicle. Okay, your vehicle, your rules. And not to mention, it's against the law. All right, It is against the law for especially little kids not to be strapped into a booster seat or a car seat. And if you get in an accident and something happens, guess who's going to be liable? Guess who they're going to be suing? You. Remember that. Okay, please. Like I said, rule number one, I'm always right. I may not always be right, but I am definitely right on this. Do not do that. Once again, do not take on a company minors. Do not take kids without proper booster seats and car seats, okay? Please. And number 10, something I see happen all the time, and I'm sure you probably have too, whether you're a driver or a rider. Heck, you probably even done this. 
Do not take more riders than you have seat belts. Okay, people? If you only have a car that has four seat belts, do not try to squeeze five people in there. It's just like taking a kid sitting on someone's lap. An adult on someone's lap is just the same uh, as a projectile as an infant is and someone trying to hold them. Okay? Please do not do it. If you do not have the seat belts, you do not take them, make them order another ride, whatever you got to do, just don't do it. Because once again, it is against the law. You're going to get a ticket. And if something happens, you are going to be liable. And for the riders that are in your car, please make them buckle up. I know all states, it might not be, you know, the law to have everybody buckled up in every seat. But guess what? Be smart. Use common sense. Safety, guys. You have a seatbelt. Use it. Takes one second to click it in. Just do it. Now, number 11. Now, after you finally know all this information and you're going to go out there and actually drive now, please make sure you keep your doors locked when you are pulling up to finally um, verify your riders. When you pull up, you want to make sure you just have the doors locked, roll the windows down, say, hey, are you waiting for an Uber or Lyft? They will say yes. Say, what is your driver's name? They will hopefully say your, your name. And then you can say how many people are in your party because you want to just verify that if they're ordering for an X, which is up to four people, that they don't have five because as soon as you unlock those doors and they get in your car, it's a lot harder to get them out. And it's a much, much of a headache that you do not want to deal with. Okay, please trust me on that. So just verify everything before you ever unlock your doors. Now, some markets may have the pin system in, which, hey, it makes it even easier. You pull up. They tell you the number, you put the number in because you can't start the trip without this. Verifying passengers helps you a lot and it helps you avoid getting scammed into um, what we like to say, the Uber rider scam of the passenger saying you took the wrong people. And nobody wants that headache because then you lose your money and they get a free ride. That's not cool, right? No. Now, speaking of the scams, do not fall, fall for the Uber support generated rider scam. Now, what that is, is you'll get, a, you'll get a ping for a ride, and it'll pop up. It'll say either Uber support, generated rider. They start getting creative and everything. And as soon as you accept that ride, you start driving there, you'll get a phone call. And in the app, it'll say, you're receiving a phone call from your passenger. Or they will try to text you, saying, this is Uber support. You are an awesome person. You just won $500. All you have to do is pull over right now, cancel the ride, give us all your information, and you'll receive this money. Okay? Do not do that. That is a scam. Uber and Lyft will not send out generated riders just for you, okay? And they're not going to just randomly give you a bonus out of the blue. And these people will run off your information. They will say your name, how, what's your star rating. They'll know the exact make, model, color of your vehicle. And that's because they're the passenger, okay? That's the information passengers have in their hand after they request a ride. So please, you heard it now. You should already know this. This has been going on for years now. Do not fall for that, okay? Trust me. You will thank me later. Now, number 14, use my closing line. All right, I have an awesome closing line after each ride to say, you've been a five-star passenger. Hope you stay safe and have a great day. However you want to say that nonchalant and in whatever kind of way, when you say something about stars, that reminds people to, you know, to rate you. And if they rate you, they could potentially tip you. Which also, remember guys, they get up to 30 days to tip you in the app. So don't get too discouraged out there if you didn't get a tip right away. But odds are, if you don't get a tip right away, you're probably not going to get one. So the best advice I have is don't expect tips. All right? If you don't expect them, then you're not upset when they don't come in. And when you do get them, eh, you're more grateful, right? And my last tip, which is the biggest one, have backup plans. Okay, you need to always have a backup plan because you could get deactivated at any moment while you're out there driving, even if you're doing everything right for the simple fact of some riders are just shady SOBs and they will report and make up any kind of stories they can to get a free ride. Okay, I hate to say it, but in this day and age, that's just how it goes. So have a backup plan. Never put all your eggs into one basket. And please, just I would recommend using Rideshare itself for a stepping stone to doing something else while you're in between jobs or, you know, extra money. But never rely on it to pay all your bills. That's the best advice I could say. Well, I hope these 15 tips are helpful to you guys. If you've enjoyed this, make sure you smash that thumbs up button. 
As always, check the description below for extra information and tips. You keep doing your thing. Get your money. Use common sense. And until next time, Uber on or don't. Peace out.